Hello, hello and uh, welcome to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. In this tutorial, it's going to be quite similar to one of the Premiere Pro tutorials I did, and that is basically going over colour correction, um, and also defining the difference between colour correction and colour grading. If we take this first clip, for example, we can see there's a few problems with this clip. Now, Final Cut actually has a very nice feature built in um, called colour balance, and if you just turn that on by checking this box here, if you don't have this window up here, you just want to press this button here that shows or hide the inspector. Just click that till you see this. Make sure your clip is selected. You can see when you hover over the timeline, it's yellow around the outside, so you know it's selected. And you can just check balance. And that will make a very good job of sorting it out. You can see we've got a bit more detail back in the sky. Um, it's taken some of the saturation, some of the colour and life out of the grass. But it's probably not what you want. And I would strongly recommend when you get to... A level that you feel comfortable actually manually correcting this. So let's turn this off by just pressing again in the same box. And over here in color correction, we're going to choose a check this arrow, and that's going to take us over to our actual color correction settings. And the way it works, it's comprised of three tabs you've got color, saturation, and exposure. Your color um, tab allows you to tint the overall controls of your of the image to a certain color you can tint the highlights to a certain color the midtones and the blacks when they're all along this line it means that it's default and you can actually drag it anywhere along this line and it's not actually going to do anything what makes the difference is when you drag it up or down anything central um, gives it a complete neutra neutrality and no difference so we might decide that we actually want to have a bit of yellow in the highlights. So we know it's the highlights because it's the lightest of the circle. You can see this circle is grey and this one's black. And this one that's kind of like nothingness um, with a few more lines, circles around the outside. Um, that is the overall control. You can see if we just grab this and put it into the blue, the whole image looks an awful blue colour. Um, Mid-tones I would strongly recommend keeping fairly central. For a warm shot, you may want to tint it very slightly orange like this, or for a cool shot, you might want to tint it very slightly blue like this, but I wouldn't recommend going any further than plus 20. Um, for this shot, because we want a nice warm feel, we're going to go plus 8 orange. And for a warm feel, it's actually quite a common thing to tint the uh, whites a yellow colour. And the mid-tones... I actually like to add a bit of blue to the midtones just to balance out the shot a little. The black, you don't want to move too much. The reason being, if you overly tint the, uh, if you overly tint the blacks, you can see that you then actually lose the blacks, and the true blacks are then gone because you've over tinted them. So blacks, I prefer to keep literally on nothing. Um, but you can see that by choosing the midtones to blue, we've actually countered uh, our overall controls. So you might want to just boost these up a little bit. And now that, that's starting to look quite nice. Over here, we're going to move on to our saturation tab. And in here, this controls basically how colourful the image is, and that is what saturation means. So you can, um, by dragging down, you can completely take the colour out of the blacks. So you can see now it's there's not as much colour in the shot. Um, and just like in the colour tab, you can see that the white represents the highlights, midtones, and blacks. Um, the way I like to do it, I like to put most of the colour in the midtones. Desaturation is actually quite a common thing to uh, procedure when you want to create a filmic look, as it were. There was a big hype about the filmic look, and now that everyone's running around with digital SLRs, there's less of a need to do it all digitally. Um, so you can put in lots of colour and still get a filmic look if you're using a digital SLR. So I'm just going to bring down the saturation of the highlights and the blacks, and then boost the midtones. And you can see now we're getting quite a nice balanced shot. We're going to move on to our final tab, which is the exposure. Oh, sorry, one more thing. Um, as before, this is an overall slider control. You can see we can boost the entire image up or not. Let's go over to exposure. And once again, we have three tabs that represent each one. You can always like um, drag them up and down. This time, we're talking about the exposure. And what that actually means is just the brightness. You don't really want to ever put your blacks up unless you really have no detail in them and the shot is too dark. For instance, we might want to boost them up a little bit, just like that. However, in this shot, 
there's actually maybe not enough black so we're just going to decrease it just minor you can see it's minus one and that really is a nice uh, a nice black balance in the shot now there's the way you generally do it is you want to create some quite stylized contrast unless you're working in a documentary so the whites generally go up and the blacks generally go down now where it varies is your midtones some people like to have them high and then that completely distincts the uh, blacks or you can put it low and then the focus becomes on the details in the whites that you put in for this shot because I want the bright feel I think it's better to put it up but you can see that as we bring up the brightness of the midtones we've actually lost some of the colour in them mainly because they're all just going up um, if we look into this colour slider you can see that as they get darker they lose their colour um, which is kind of, don't actually use this as a reference but you can kind of see what would be happening to the images so we can then just go back into the saturation tab and just put a bit more colour back into the midtones and you can see we've now got brighter midtones and they are more colourful you can see there's now an orange bar over here if you're familiar with uh, Final Cut Pro 10 you'll know that that means that it's actually rendering command 9 will show us our rendering management and you can see that is now just finished the orange bar is gone and this circle says 100% letting us know that all the media is ready for playback if we just press down on the arrow keys oh sorry mm -hmm. if we go over to the timeline and press down on the arrow keys I mean up and press play you can we can now play it back command shift F will let us go full screen and that's looking quite nicely but you can see there's a big problem now in terms of continuity from the first shot to the second shot just hit escape to exit full screen you can see that this is quite a nice corrected shot now notice that this is more corrected than graded we have started to give it a bit of style and that is the difference between color correcting and color grading the color correction comes in where you actually want to change the color to balance out shots for instance if one shot is particularly blue and dismal for instance this shot um, very much has a lot of blue in it you may not know what I'm talking about but you can see if we just go into this shot and we go into color and we change the um, overall slider control to a slightly red color you can see that we're actually going to start to get some more natural colors as opposed to the blue that it was which is completely unnatural um, and that would be color correcting and then you go through the settings and just try and balance everything out but that is not what we want to do we want to um, grade in this instance you can see that we've actually created quite a stylized image look on this shot and that is a grade Final Cut Pro 10 has a cool new feature where we can actually match a shot's color so let's make sure we've got our next shot selected in the timeline this is this shot of Vinny from a new short film sitting down and we're just going to go ahead and press match color then in the timeline we can choose a reference frame from any of the shots excluding the actual shot we've already got um, to match so we want to match this shot it doesn't actually matter which frame we choose because they're all representative of the entire sequence mm -hmm. so we're just going to click here and press apply and you can see that very quickly we've created something that could flow in obviously this isn't perfect there's a little bit too much green in this shot but we can go over into the corrections and change this if we turn off the match color and go into the correction we can quickly play around with the colors like what we did the first one and just note that we may need to get slightly different effects based on what we had last time let's just increase the exposure of the midtones to bring a bit more detail back into his jacket let's crush a little bit of the blacks and let's bring up the whites a little bit and then I know I want to get a bit more saturation on the whites and tint them even more yellowy maybe slightly towards the green and that flows much nicer on I think one of the only th problems is the brightness I think we're going to have to increase the overall brightness of the shot and then dip the blacks a little bit more 
And there we go, we can start to see we're creating a, quite a nice flow. Obviously, you just play around until everything's perfect. We can see that this shot is a little bit more orange. Um, but that is the job of perhaps the colorist. However, this is what's new about Final Cut Pro 10. In this working environment, the colorist is the editor, as it were. It's, create, it's creating the job of the editor bigger. Um, obviously, the lack of XML is a big problem for some people. However, for freelancers, this is the go-to editor of choice, I would imagine. In production companies, at the moment, maybe it's not, because you do have people that specifically colour grade, and the lack of ability to transfer the timeline to a colour grading application is a big issue. Um, but like what happened with uh, the first release of Mac OS X, we will be seeing some big updates very soon, and look at where Mac OS X is now. That's all I would say anyway. Um, so that's just a very quick look at colour correcting and colour grading in Final Cut Pro 10. Um, in the next tutorial we're going to look at something else. Um, most of these are going to be going over the basics. Um, but I hope you found this useful and I hope now you will be familiar with the tools inside of the colour correction. You can always turn them off as you did with the colour match and colour balance effects by just checking this blue box. And it remembers exactly what you did so when you turn it off, if you go back to it about 10 minutes later, you can just turn it back on. The other thing to bear in mind is that if you have an audition, you can see I do here based on this icon, if I just click that and switch to another layer, you can see that this layer does not have the same colour correction applied. Each colour correction is independent to the clip it's been applied to and not the entire audition, which is very handy because obviously not every clip needs the same correction. The only other thing I'm going to very quickly um, touch on is the fact that over here in our media manager we can see that there are actually quite a few um, preset things but you can access this by uh, just choosing one of these icons to see what you actually want to go to if we just go onto the effects browser you can see there's actually a few effects that are based on color corrections um, very similar to well, some of them even have the same names as video copilots uh, Film Magic Pro preset color corrections that are available for Adobe After Effects. Um, you can see there's a cool cast one. Um, and the cool thing is, is that you can scrub over them and preview your shot or sequence um, with the effect applied. And that is going to be a real time save. You can see that's quite cool. Um, that adds some broadcast safe effects, something like that. Um, and bleach bypass, obviously. It's all quite extreme stuff. Um, but if we just drag the age paper onto here, you can see that it's now got a nice OTT effect. It's not what you want, maybe it is. Um, but bear in mind that this is here, it's very useful. Um, we can just go on to looks and just look at the looks by themselves and drag the glory. Um, and I'll cover in a later tutorial, you can actually audition different looks, um, which is very handy, obviously.